Hi, everyone. I'm so pleased to welcome Octavia Marsh, Executive Director of Hanover Cares, as our guest today. Octavia works in close partnership with the CSB, and she has some exciting and effective initiatives to share with us today regarding keeping our youth substance free. Octavia, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Laura. Um, first, I just want to share a little bit about who Hanover Cares is. Um, we're a community coalition and we're dedicated to eliminating the use of alcohol, nicotine, and other drugs among our Hanover County youth. Um, and we do that through education and community collaboration. Great, thank you. Um, and Octavia, so it's a big task to ensure that our youth refrain from using tobacco products, alcohol, and other substances. Um, so before we talk about how Hanover Cares is tackling the problem, can you tell us about the scope of the problem? What are we seeing here in Hanover right now? Yeah, um, so a little bit of background about Hanover Cares. Um, we've been around since 1997 um, and then got a grant in uh, 2016. And so, of course, the grants allowed us to um, get our process a little more um, in line to get some data. And so what our data historically has shown is that um, among our Hanover youth, alcohol and marijuana have always been our top concerns. And so in 2017, um, right along with what we've been seeing in the news, we actually saw that trend shift a bit. And so among our youth, we saw alcohol, then e-cigarettes, and then marijuana um, as the top substances that were reported of use. Um, and so that's a you know, very different um, scope for us. And so we were able to shift our work a bit. Um, and I'll talk a little bit too about youth engagement and how we um, involve youth in, in this picture as well. Um, and so one thing to point out too about that data is that our youth perception um, versus the actual use is always different. And so youth perceive that their peers are using at greater rates than they actually are. And so that's one of the things that we try to change um, in our conversations and what we do with Hanover Cares is just to normalize um, that all youth are not using. Um, and so shifting those social norms a bit, that's a big um, focus for us. Great, great. Can you share some specific numbers from the data? Um, anything? You know, you talked about youth believing that other kids were using. I've heard a lot of parents saying that, you know, they think, oh, well, all the kids are going to use anyway. They're going to try this stuff anyway. Sort of what's the point of having a conversation? Just go ahead and let them experiment. Um, but you're saying that that's not the case, that, that kids are not, the norm is that kids are not using. Right. Um, and so when we look at our top three substances and we look at alcohol, um, when we look at 12th grade data, about 19% um, of those who report at use um, make up those numbers. And then the perception um, was that 49% uh, were actually using amongst 12th graders. Mm -hmm. And so you can see that, you know, just for that one um, substance in that one age group, how drastically different that is. Um, and so another thing we look at is access. And a majority of youth report that they get those substances right from within the home. And so um, that really shapes, you know, the way that we do prevention as well, because we're trying to also educate the parents in our community to really shift some of these um, these perspectives and access and really what's happening in the home. And so we definitely like to say that prevention starts in the home. And so while we're a community coalition and we educate, um, our goal in the education is so that parents are equipped to then um, be able to help their kids in the home. Great. Can you talk a little bit more specifically then about what Hanover Cares is doing now um, to prevent youth from using? Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna go back just a bit about um, some of our other data sources and just like young adults. Um, we do a separate survey for the, them as well. Um, and it's interesting because the past 30 day um, use actually is very similar to what we're seeing with the youth population. Um, and so when I say youth, we're talking the 12 to 17 and when I'm talking young adult, um, that's our 18 to 25. And so um, alcohol, e-cigarettes, binge drinking, those are our top what we're seeing in the young adults. And then the interesting thing is we also do a adult survey. And so with the adult survey, what we're realizing is that 
um, many people are not necessarily having those conversations at home. And then um, when it comes to like medication and alcohol storage, many people are not locking them up or monitoring them. Um, and so all of that data helps us to shape what we need to be doing in the community. And so our community response, if you will, is all about engaging youth and adults, um, both in the prevention education in encouraging frequent conversations. And so you may have even seen in the community, um, in our schools and different businesses, our Just Say Something campaign. And that's all about um, keep talking, keep caring, because kids do listen. Um, and so then uh, we also engage our youth in the process. And they have a program called Hidden in Plain Sight where we set up a mock teen bedroom and allow adults in the community to come and look for different indicators of drug and alcohol use. And then uh, we take it a step further and we even engage our middle school youth in a program that we do called Cafe Conversations. Um, and that's where we basically equip um, our families to have some conversations in the home. And we know that some kids are not verbal. Um, and so we equip them with some journals and some conversation jars as well. And so just trying to be a resource um, at whatever stage of readiness our community might be. Um, and then our juvenile driver's license ceremony, that's another one where we are, of course, engaging new drivers. And uh, Project Sticker Shock is normally done around Super Bowl weekend. Um, and that's where, again, we engage youth and they go into our local stores and they're able to put up some um, stickers on the alcoholic beverages to just remind people, um, especially the clerks at the stores to check IDs um, and that you know alcohol is for 21 and older. Um, and I say alcohol, actually now tobacco is too, um, but Sticker Shock only covers alcohol right now. Um, and lastly, I'll just talk about our Safe Homes Initiative. Um, that's um, basically an a initiative where we're engaging the community in the response of locking up your medications and safe drug disposal. Um, and so um, in partnership with the CSB, we have um, lock boxes. And so we get those out at various community events. Um, and then we also have drug disposal bags or packets. And that's another way that people can just safely dispose of medications in their home. Um, and so we have some more information about that in an article that was just in uh, the local um, uh, this month. And so I definitely encourage everyone to just visit our website and check out um, that to learn more about safe homes and some of the other initiatives that we have going on. Great, thank you so much. And thank you, Octavia, for joining us. Viewers, if you have any questions or comments about this video, um, please feel free to message us and we'll get back to you um, as soon as possible. Thank you for joining us this week and stay safe. Thank you.